guys, I welcome you all to IntelliPath's Python week. So today we'll be learning Python from basics to its most advanced concepts. So before moving on with the session, please subscribe to our channel. And also hit the bell icon for the upcoming updates from our channel. And also if you enjoy our content, you can leave a like. So in this Python week, we'll be looking into various Python concepts day wise. On day one, we'll start off with the Python introduction and Python installation. Day 2, we'll have a look at Python variables and operators. On day 3, we'll be looking into functions in Python and data types. Day 4, we'll have a glance on Python classes, objects and flow control. And finally, on day 5, we'll be looking into web scraping and file handling in Python and that would be the end of this Python week. So now without any further delays, let's begin with it. Hey guys, welcome to day one of the IntelliPath's Python week. So today we are going to start off with the Python introduction and installation. Now let's get started with it. Introduction to Python. So what is Python? Well, Python is a high level object oriented programming language for general purpose programming. It is one of the most widely used high level programming language and is well known for executing basic tasks with less code, which makes it more compact and an economical language to learn. If you see, Python code is often 3 to 5 times shorter than the Java codes and around 5 to 10 times shorter than C++ codes. Well, if you talk about its history, it was developed by Guido van Rossum in the year 1991 and since then its open source community is still growing. So how do you think he came up with this name? Was it because of a snake? Well, no. Rosam named Python over the name of a sitcom TV series, Monty's Python Flying Circus. It seems he was highly impressed with the show, right? So these are some of the high level introduction to Python. Now a question might arise in your mind that what made Python so popular or why you should learn it. So let's discuss it one by one. So the first point we have is simple and easy to learn. Well, if you compare Python with any other language, for example, Java or C++, you'll find that its syntax is way lot easier than them. You don't have to worry about the missing semi-commas in the end. And its syntax is more readable and you are safe from writing multiple lines of code just for printing a statement, like in case of Java. Uh, if you talk about Python, all you need to write is just one line of statement, for example, print and within the double quotes, mention whatever you want to print. So this is how it is simple and easy to learn. The next point comes the career opportunity. Well, like I told you in the beginning of this video itself that Python has a huge career opportunity in the IT industry. Almost every other IT company, be it a startup or a multi-billionaire company are using Python in some or the other ways. So if you're a Python developer, you will be in a huge demand for a wide range of jobs in the domain of machine learning, databases, data analysis, cloud infrastructure, website designing, website reliability, testing, scraping, security, mobile developments, and many more. If you don't trust my words, just go and look out for Python developer job on any major job website. You will find thousands of job opportunities out there with an average salary of around $116,000. This indicates that there are many companies out there who are competing to hire a knowledgeable Python developer for them. So yeah, you have a huge career opportunity in Python. It all depends on your skill. All right. Next is large open source community. Well, if you become a Python developer and when you are stuck or you want to learn something new, then you don't have to worry about it. You'll find a large number of resources like reference manuals, books, tutorials, videos, forums, etc. out there on the internet. If you have any doubt or some technical issues, you can directly seek help from thousands of Python community members on forum, Twitter, Facebook, and pretty much everywhere. Now, since Python is an open source community, you will always find people who are trying to improve it, keeping it fresh and up to date with current trends and bringing out newer version of the language, right? So yeah, it has a damn large open source community. Next we have is reliable and efficient. Ask any Python developer or anyone who has ever used the language and they will agree that it's speedy, reliable and more efficient. You can work with and deploy Python applications in nearly any environment and there's little to no performance loss, no matter what platform you work with. Again, because it's versatile, this also means that you can work across several domains, including web development, desktop application, mobile applications, and many more. You're not bound to a single platform or domain. 
as it offers the same experience almost everywhere. All right. So next we have is the extensive library. Well, Python has a huge set of library list, which would be useful for any programmer interested in Python, depending on their area of interest. For example, you have NumPy for scientific computing, Plotlib for data visualization, NLTK for natural language processing, Django for web framework, Pygame for game development, and there are many more. It can be used in a lot of places and has a wide variety of application. Like for web development, you can use Python web framework like uh, Django, Flask, and Tornado. If you are into developing desktop application, you can go with PyGTK and Cocoa. If you are planning to use Python in the field of machine learning or deep learning or data science, you'll find many Python libraries for it. Like uh, sklearn, TensorFlow, Theano, NLTK, and many more. If you talk about cloud and DevOps, you can use OpenStack Python Software Development Kit, which is generally used to write Python automation scripts to create and manage resources in your OpenStack cloud. You can even use a Python library named Fabric for streamlining the use of SSH for application development or system administration task. All right. Last word we have is hardware programming. Next, if you're planning to switch over to hardware programming, you have Raspberry Pi to connect your project to the real world with Python. Well, now that you know how important is Python to the world, let's see the popularity of Python in industry. Well, big tech giants are using Python. In fact, Python is one of the Google's favorite languages. They are always hiring experts in it and they have even created many of their popular products with it. Well, I don't think I should again mention that since many big companies like Yahoo, Facebook, Netflix, Dropbox, YouTube, BitTorrent, NASA, and many other rely on Python developers. So these companies are always in search of talented professionals who have already worked on and have some experience in Python. There is and there always be a demand for Python developers and Python web developers, and they are even offered some decent packages. So at Intellipad, the company we work for is basically a training and an e-learning company. So we go through hundreds of job descriptions if it is Python, we go through job descriptions which require Python and gather all the skills which are expected by an employer so that you can easily land that job. Also, as a training company, we do not use trainers. We rather use working professionals who are working in this particular industry and also gather details and information from them and what was asked to them by their own employer and also what should be taught to our trainees so that we can make them a better programmer and also how to make them basically get a job really easily. So with all that details put together, we have formed this Python certification training course where we'll give you live training projects, we'll give you hands-on, we'll give you all the support to make you the perfect candidate to get into a company into a Python role. So that's what we are doing here. And when we take you on board for this course, we will make sure that you learn all of these skills. So the very first thing that we'll be doing is installing Python on our system. So I have already installed Python in my system. For those of you who don't have it, you can download it and get it installed from its official website, www.python.org download. So let me just show you how easy is it to install Python on your system. Let me open my default browser and I'll write here www.python.org slash download. So as you can see here, we have a download option of download Python 3.7.1. If you want a different version for Windows, Linux or Mac, you can just click over to these links. For example, if I am a Windows user and I want a different version of it, then let's see. I click the link and you can download different versions of Python from here. So the first two option that we got up here is latest Python 3 release Python 3.7.1 and latest Python 2 release Python 2.7.15. Now these are the two popular version of Python. Now which version should you download? Well, I have installed Python 3 in my machine. In the past, there was a bit of debate in the coding community about which Python version was the best one to learn, Python 2 or Python 3. 
specifically python 2.7 or python 3.5 or 3.7 all right let me just tell you python 2 has been most popular version for a decade and a half and is still in demand at certain companies however more companies are moving from python 2 to python 3 for example in 2017 instagram migrated the majority of their python code base from python 2.7 to python 3 as with each newer version of python it is getting a faster runtime on the other hand nobody is currently working on to make python 2.7 work faster also the community support for python 3 is more better so for someone who wants to learn python programming for beginner i'd suggest that you should avoid spending time on a version that is becoming obsolete well let's download python 3 for windows so let's directly jump up to our first window and click on download python 3.7.1 Download it. So yeah, it's downloaded. Just click over the .exe file and follow the installation step and it will get installed. Click it. Click on the install now version. Select the drive where you want to install it and click on the next and it will be installed on your machine. Alright, so let's click on the install now option. Yes. And the setup will install Python on my system. Well, if you are starting Python, you will find that you will have various options where you can write down your codes and get it executed. By default, we use the Python CLI. You can use any text editor like Notepad or Notepad++, or you can even use any Python IDE like Anaconda, which has Jupyter Notebook and Spider pre-installed in it. Python is majorly based on indentation. So these IDEs will help you a lot while coding and debugging your program. So by then my setup was successful. Let's close it. For this tutorial, I'll be using Jupyter Notebook, which is a web-based application that will allow me to write my Python codes on it. It's ready to use and it gives me an interactive data science environment. All right. If you're installing Jupyter Notebook and Python, I would strongly recommend you to use the Anaconda distribution, which already includes the Python, the Jupyter Notebook and other commonly used packages for starting with Python. All right. So for downloading it, let's visit the website www.anaconda.com slash download. Let's open our default browser www.anaconda.com slash downloads. So as you can see, we have a download option up here. Just click over it and your installation will start. Open the downloaded file and follow the series of steps and install Anaconda on your machine. All right. So for me, I have already installed Anaconda on my system. So let me just go over there and open it. Anaconda Navigator. This might take some time to start. So this is how the Anaconda Navigator looks like after the installation. From here, I'll select my Jupyter Notebook and hit the launch button. My Jupyter Notebook will open in my default browser. So here's my Jupyter Notebook. It opened on the local host with port number 8889. So this is how the Jupyter Notebook will look like. So from here, go on to the new, select Python 3 from the notebook. And this will redirect you to the Python notebook page where you can write all the different sorts of Python codes on it, ranging from a beginner level to advanced one. Now that we have set up our environment for coding, let me just give you a glimpse of how easy is Python. You want to perform addition? It's as simple as 1 plus 2 equal 3. That's it. All you need to do is 1 plus 2 and hit enter. You'll get the output. So at Intellipad, the company we work for, is basically a training and an e-learning company so we go through hundreds of job descriptions if it is python we go through job descriptions which require python and gather all the skills which are expected by an employer so that you can easily land that job also as a training company we do not use trainers we rather use working professionals who are working in this particular industry and also gather details and information from them and what was asked to them by their own employer and also what should be taught to our trainees so that we can make them a better programmer and also how to make them 
basically get a job really easily. So with all that details put together, we have formed this Python certification training course where we'll give you live training projects, we'll give you hands-on, we'll give you all the support to make you the perfect candidate to get into a company into a Python role. So that's what we are doing here.